Welcome to this week's episode of Love Subbing. And in this week's episode, it's been inspired by some of the forums that we've seen on some of the RV Facebook pages. When you travel in your RV, things can get broken very easily. Yeah, we often say it's like driving through a 7.0 Richter scale earthquake every time you tow. Right, so it's about repairing things in beautiful locations. Yep, that's what we often say about RV. And so in this episode, we're gonna show you some of the things that broke over... 11,000 miles, right? Yep, all the way to El Paso, Albuquerque, and down south to Florida. Yep. And we'll show you how we did it to fix things. Right. And also a few things at the end of this video that we forgot that we wish we had taken. So stay tuned. So probably the most serious thing that failed on our 2019 RV trip was our power converter. And that was a big deal because even though you're plugged into shore power in an RV, you have to kind of understand how the electrical systems work. And though you're plugged into shore power, there's really only three systems that run on 110 volt power directly from the shore. And that is your air conditioner, your refrigerator, and all of your outlets. Everything else runs off of 12 volts. Your lights, your fans, all of those other systems run off of 12 volts. So you have to have a power converter that's gonna take that 110 volt and convert it to 12 volts. It also charges your battery. And you can see here, when we hooked up to our shore power, we were supposed to be getting around 13 and a half volts or so, and we were getting 12 volts, which was meant our battery wasn't getting recharged. And as we used all of the lights and the fans and all that other stuff, slowly our battery was going down, 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 and there was no way to recharge it other than running a generator, which I hate, or the truck. So I think in a previous video I mentioned, we had our 1.25 amp battery charger that we were able to hook up to charge the battery because remember our 110 volt system was still working so we were able to plug it in here and then charge the battery um, and keep that thing working. And you mentioned this in the previous yep, video. Yep, I certainly did. And so what we did is we were able to limp by because if you're sitting there for a week and you don't have access to a generator because we were in a place that we weren't allowed to run generators and we didn't want to hook up and run the truck because that was inefficient this allowed us to keep going and we kept it waterproof by putting it underneath the airstream yep yep and we definitely kept it um like cindy says we were able to keep it there so that worked out really good um then it was time to change out the charge for the power converter i ordered a progressive dynamics 4600 power converter from bestconverters.com and if you need a power converter, Randy is, everybody I bumped into on the RV parks told me, go talk to Randy at bestconverters.com. And so I ordered, he walked me through, this is a progressive charger, so it'll be better on my battery. And we'll be able to um, have a really nice converter. I did a video on it and. The sound didn't turn out. So uh, yeah, that was our first big failure, our power converter. Probably the biggest one we had on the big trip. The next failure that we had was a failure of our check valve in our fresh water system. And this is something else that I see a whole lot of posts on in the RV forums on Facebook and elsewhere. And you can tell that your check valve has failed when we hooked up to city water and slowly, slowly, slowly our fresh tank was filling up until the point that it started dumping water out of the overflow. Okay? Which is never good. Which is never a good thing. And so what a check valve is, a check valve is a valve that allows a fluid to flow in only one direction. So when you pressurize your fresh water system with the um, city water, it'll close that check valve. When you're running your water pump, it'll open the check valve and allow water to flow into the faucets and sinks and etc. What happens is if that valve doesn't close all the way and you pressurize with city water, you're slowly gonna fill your fresh water tank until it overflows. If you recall my video on spare parts, which we'll link up here, you know that I always carry extra parts for critical systems like fresh water. So I always have an extra fresh water pump. Your check valve is located in this part of the water pump. And you can either have a rebuild kit, which you can buy off of Amazon or whatever, or you can have the entire fresh pump. I carry a pump. It's a 15 minute fix, four screws, unscrew here, unscrew here, make the electrical connection and you can have a fresh water system working properly right from the get-go. Now, if you don't have that immediately, the way you basically work around that system is you turn off city water, you've now got a full fresh water tank, run off your water pump, use the system until your water tank gets low, 
turn it back on and sometimes just turning that uh, going from city water to the water pump to city water to the water pump will reseat that valve and you'll be good to go ours didn't so we eventually had to replace it but um that's one of the ways in which you can get by if it fails again it'll just fill your tank wait to get to 100 percent turn off city water go back to the pump and you can go back and forth like that but that was our next failure but we had the replacement sitting right there and it was a 15 minute fix all right the third failure that we had was our 30 amp power cord and I'll show a close pic a close up picture here but somehow at some campground I have my suspicions but it got overheated big time and I'll show a bigger picture of this uh, here and you can see that and I've since disassembled it because I'm going to be putting a new one on it and so we went and I tell you what trying to find one of these unless you go to a camping store Walmart doesn't carry them tractor supply doesn't care nobody carries these except RV places so we went all look, looking all over we the place. We stopped at like five, six different places hoping to find one. Right, because you shop online, they say, yep, we've got them, and then they don't. So um, we finally found one in Valverde, Texas, and we were able to get a new one. And the point here was to make sure that it wasn't something in the RV uh, that was causing this. So it was either in the, the plug didn't look too bad when I disassembled it. Um, must have been some campground, but you can see we use this for the next three months, and there's no heating. There was no problems. No problems. So it must have been something in the campground. And I always test the voltage block when I get in. And it showed up good. We had a surge protector. Um, our auto former. But something fried that little puppy. So that was yep. our third big failure. So you're going to replace that plug and we're going to have an extra power cord then, right? Yes. Yep. That's what we'll do. That's great. Yep. So another thing that went wrong or broke on our trip down south and west was this little door that's on our rear bumper that holds all our sewer stuff. And unbelievably, the little hinge is held together with a dual-sided sticky tape. And so the only way it was being held on were the two hooks in the front. And so I spent probably two hours in the hot El Paso heat scraping off old double-sided sticky tape, washing this clean, and reapply. All right, from an interior standpoint, we had a couple cabinet latches break, which of itself is not unusual, but it was unusual to have one of these big heavy metal ones break. Fortunately, we keep one of those in our spare parts kit and we were able to easily replace that one. The other one that we had break, and this one breaks a lot of the time, is this female part of this cabinet latch. So it's very fragile and it tends to break quite a bit. And so those were the latches that broke. All right, so those were the things that we broke on our 2019 summer trip. Yep. Now we're gonna give you a couple of things that we wish we had had that we're definitely gonna bring in 2020. Item number one, our nifty solar shower. Yeah, this thing is awesome. So we, our, air, our RV does not have an exterior shower like a lot of the new ones do. But you just kind of fill this little guy up. Set it in the sun and it gets to a very nice comfortable temperature. You get the little spigot, you get a little mirror, and let me tell you something, this thing gets nuclear hot when it you does. set it out in the sun. It does, and it would have been very nice to have at Doswell when we were on limited water. Yeah, just to hose down your feet or just to cool yeah. off a little bit. Yeah, so uh, this, this little thing would have been handy dandy to have. Yeah, we'll include links to some of the stuff in the description of the video, but definitely if you don't have an exterior solar shower, this little guy is great. Yep. Okay, so the next thing that we have is our sewer hose expander and we're doing green screen I, leave a comment below what you think of our green screen technology here and i don't even know if this is showing up so it may just be an empty hand right now <laughs> <laughs> but most people have their sewer hoses already put together these days i think they're those rhino things or something like that but we don't we have two 10 foot lengths and we keep a spare in the truck and one of them started leaking so when that happens you put your connections in but this little thing, which hopefully you can see, allows you to take your hose, and this is a clean one, obviously, put it in. And pull it apart. Pull it apart. And stretch your connection so right. that it fits. It's hard to do with two hands. Pull it apart, stretch it out, and put your connections in. Yep. Very handy to have. Yep. So what was the other thing we needed? Um, distilled water. And I, I know this is available commonly at grocery stores, but we had a circumstance when we were looking at our battery and 
we were looking to see what the converter was doing. Yeah, we just want to make sure everything was perfect and we checked and, the uh, water level in the battery. Right, and we needed to get the distilled water to fill it up because we were in the southwest in the high heat and the water was just eventually evaporating because there was nothing in the humidity to keep it there. So we were looking for these at a gas station. So instead of a grocery store, so it would have been handy just to have a bottle on hand. Yep, and like I say, you can get it at the grocery store, but it's better to have a bottle on hand. Yep. All right. All right, see, so what picture are we showing here? Okay, this is me helping to clean out the sewer system and right before we winterize. And what the tool is I'm holding is we call the wand of nastiness. Right, and RV doesn't have a uh, black water flush system. So we have to shove this thing down the toilet and kind of flush everything out. Right, so guess who gets to do that? Normally we do it during winterization uh, and dewinterization. But when we were gone for you know, six months or so, we were like, you know, it'd be really nice just to rinse everything out when we were hooked up to right. full hookup. So Especially after using the black water tank for so long at one period of time. And it's really easy just to put it into the bumper where our sewer stuff is stowed. So that's going to come along with us in 2020. Okay. Yep. And there you go. Those are four things that we wish we had brought with us and we will bring next time. Yep. Awesome. Well, there you have it. The things that broke and the things that we forgot on our big summer trip. Yep. So if you like this video, give us a big thumbs up. Right, and we're trying out some new technology with the green screen. Yeah, let us know if you thought the green screen was kind of fun. As well as I've hired an extremely expensive graphic designer to design <laughs> our new logo, which you can see up this way. Um, and uh, the, the new designer is me. Yeah, so she's not that, well, you are pretty expensive. But yeah, well. Anyway, definitely hit the subscribe button. And comment below if you've been on a long trip and you've forgotten something that you would like to have brought along or if you had something that broke. Right. And we come out with RV and Airstream related videos every Tuesday. Thanks for watching.